It's time for a battle of the bags. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. Today we're going to be having a good old-fashioned comparison video. I'm going to be comparing and contrasting two beautiful classic Chanel bags, the Chanel 2.55 bag in the medium size and the Chanel mini reissue. These bags obviously have a few similarities, a few differences, and a very different price point. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what fits, mod shots, strap drop, and measurements, all that sort of thing. If you've ever had an interest in either of these two bags, then hopefully this video will be interesting to you. And if you're trying to decide between these two bags, hopefully this video will be helpful. So I'm not going to get into the backstory of these bags because it's all over the YouTube, all over the internet, and you're probably tired of hearing about them right now. So I'm gonna go right into jumping into the details. First, the medium 2.55 size. This size is most often compared to the medium classic flap, and it is at the same price point at $10,200 as of July, 2023. The bag does have four grommets on the top, so it can be adjusted to a single shoulder or a double shoulder. It has the Mona Lisa pocket on the back, and it has the quintessential double flap on the interior, like the medium classic flaps do. The bag also has, like the medium classic flaps, the love letter pocket. And inside, my particular one is the burgundy interior, and you can see that it is an open space with the two flap pockets and the lipstick pocket in the center. It also has a front slip pocket and the snap for closing it. I do snap this bag shut to close it when I store it away, and I do have a video on how to store your Chanel bags, which I will link for you, because it is very helpful, I think. But that is just the general overview for the medium 2.55 size. Now, dimension-wise, the bag is 6.2 inches in height, 9.4 inches wide, and 2.9 inches in depth. However, because of the double flap, this bag actually is much smaller inside than it is on the outside. And that is one of the cons of this bag, I will say. As you can see, it is already quite a narrow bag, so that 2.9 inches in depth is not really applicable. It's actually more like 1.75 inches in depth when you really get down to it. This does mean that it does fit a little bit less than you would expect it to, and I do consider that a con of the bag. The double strap drop on this bag is 11 inches, and the single strap drop is 20.5 inches. Now for the Mini 2.55. This bag currently retails for $4,900, which is the same price as the mini rectangular. However, unlike this mini rectangular, this bag also has four grommets on the top, so it can be worn long shoulder, but it also can be worn short shoulder, which in my opinion makes it a little bit more versatile than the mini rectangular. Like the classic bags, the mini 2.55 has the Mona Lisa pocket on the back, and inside it has an open pocket, a slip pocket, and then a zipper pocket in the back. I never use the zipper pocket because it is incredibly thin and feels a little bit pointless, but it's there and the zipper is very pretty. Dimension wise, it's a little bit tricky because the measurements on the Chanel's website is actually different from the measurements that I took at home. So I'm going to tell you both, but honestly, I would go off of the measurements that I have for the bag itself as opposed to what Chanel has put on their website. According to Chanel, the bag is six inches in height, though I have it measured at five inches in height. Chanel says it's 7.8 inches wide, and I say it's more like seven inches wide. And then in depth, it is 2.3 inches deep, and I also agree that it is about 2.3 inches deep. Now, because this bag is a mini and doesn't have the second flap, it actually can fit quite a bit for its size, which I'm gonna be demonstrating to you in the what fits portion. As for drop, the mini has the same drop as the medium, so it is an 11 inch drop on the short shoulder. And then because it's a little bit smaller on the long shoulder, it's a 21 inch drop as opposed to a 20.5. Pretty negligible, but I'll show you what it looks like on to.
portion, I want to show you a variety of things that can fit in the Mini and the Medium 2.55. But I first wanted to start by showing you some things that don't fit so well in the Medium and the Mini. First of all, the Mini pochettes. As you can see, this does fit inside the Medium, but it does take up most of the room. If I was using the Medium on a daily basis, I probably wouldn't carry the Mini pochette in it. In the same way, sunglasses in a padded case do fit inside, but they take up quite a lot of room. So this is not something that I would be carrying in my Medium 2.55. Now let's move on to what can fit. First of all, this is the iPhone 13 Pro in a very thick OtterBox case with a stand on it. It fits in there just fine, and that means that the 13 Pro Max or any Max phone would also fit in just fine. The next thing I would put in is my wallet. This is a Recto Verso that fits just in front of the phone. But you'll notice because the bag is so narrow, that's about as much as I can put on top of each other. I do have some space on this side though, so I'm going to put in my key pouch. That stands up just fine. Then a lipstick. If I wanted to put in my headphones, that could squeeze in next to it. And that's pretty much full. You could put, say, a fragrance or a hand cream or hand sanitizer on top. So that's about as much as you can really fit in the 2.55 medium size. And that does close up nicely and fits fine. So we have a hand cream, a fragrance, key pouch, a lipstick, headphones, a recto verso, and a ginormous phone. Now it's time for the mini. First of all, I want to demonstrate once again the mini pochettes. So that can fit inside. And if you want to use it as like a bag organizer, a bag liner, you could, but it does take up most of the room. Same thing with the sunglasses in a plush case. Like you can get them in there, but that's all you're carrying. Let's start with the enormous phone the recto verso. And you'll notice that this is a little bit wider than the medium. So I actually can fit my keys behind the recto verso. They don't have to go in this side corner pocket, which means that I can put my headphones in that side corner pocket. The lipstick can slide right inside and then the fragrance and the hand lotion can go right on top. And that closes no problem, no bulges, no problem. So as you can see, they actually fit approximately the same amount. This little thing is mini, but mighty. It fits quite a lot. Once again, inside here, we have the hand cream, the fragrance, a lipstick, headphones, keys, a recto verso, and a phone. There you go. Really quick, I wanted to show you one other configuration. So phone, Chanel flap card holder, keys. This is Fat B. I got him in Italy and he is a bag hook and is utterly adorable. Always nice to have a bag hook with you. Hand cream and fragrance. So I just want to demonstrate that if we wanted to replace the Recto Verso with a flap card holder and use the little fat B instead of the headphones, we could do that quite easily in the mini. With the medium, phone, Chanel flap card holder, key pouch, fat B, lipstick, fragrance, hand lotion, max capacity. Now let's talk about some pros and cons of these bags. And the first con I want to say about the medium, which is also a pro of the mini, is the capacity. As you saw in the what fits portion, the medium doesn't really fit that much more than the mini. In fact, they generally fit about the same amount. The medium fits quite a lot for its miniature size, while the medium, which looks essentially bigger, because it's so narrow and because of the double flap, it doesn't fit as much. This might not necessarily be a con for you, especially if you don't take a lot with you or these are evening bags for you, but it's something I wanted to just point out again that they do fit approximately the same amount and this one is also much more expensive. 
Pros for both of them is the double grommets. I think that there's a lot of versatility in these bags and being able to wear it long and short shoulder, especially for the mini, which could be worn short shoulder as opposed to the mini rectangular, which can't be. I think that they both are very versatile bags. I think the look and aesthetic of these bags is also another pro. I think that they're very classic and timeless, look a bit effortless, but they also can be dressed up as well as dressed down. There also is, in some cases, the idea of it being a pro that it doesn't have a big CC logo on it. Some people don't really like having Having a logo on them at all times and I think that this bag can be very understated. A little bit more quiet luxury if we're going to use that term. However, for some people that might in fact be a con. They want to have the logo on it and so that's just something to keep in mind. If you want the double CCs, don't get a reissue because it won't scratch that ish. Another pro slash con I want to mention is resale value. And that's something that a lot of people really care about. So I wanted to make sure I touched on it here. The medium 2.55 has pretty low resale value, all things considered. As opposed to the classic flaps, the 2.55 bags do not have very good resale value. You can buy one new in boutique for 10,200 and they're selling for three, four, maybe 5,000 on the pre-loved market. If you walk this bag off the lot, it's instantly going to lose a significant portion of the value and so if you were thinking about selling it down the line, you shouldn't expect to recoup most of your money. That actually can be considered a pro though if you're not interested in buying it new. If you're willing to look on the pre-lib market, you can get some really good deals on the 2.55 size. In contrast, however, the mini 2.55 actually does have pretty good resale value. I generally see these bags going for at or above resale on the pre-loved market. So if you purchased a mini, especially in a desirable color or a neutral, and you wanted to sell it on later down the line, you would have a much better chance of recouping most or even more money than you paid. This does mean that minis are a little harder to buy in the pre-loved market for a really good deal. You can find some of below retail, and I'll link some down below for you that I found below retail that are really good. But for the most part, mini bags are still very on trend right now and the mini 2.55 is no exception. Now on the topic of resale value I also really quick wanted to touch on wear especially in the bigger sizes as opposed to the mini. Now this bag is from 2005 so it's seen a fair number of years and you can see that the top is quite pointed. This is something that can typically happen on any bag that is four grommets because the grommets will pull up and so the bag will eventually point but it's more likely to happen on the reissues as opposed to the classic flaps because the leather itself is thinner. It does doesn't have as much plushness as the classic flat bags do, so it's easier for the thinner leather to start pointing. I personally don't have a problem with my bag pointing, but if it is something that bothers you, I will again link that storage video for you on how to store your Chanel bags, because you really want to be careful of the chain, especially when you store it, because anything that puts pressure on the top flap is going to lead to pointing in the end. Now the same pointing issue can happen on the mini for the exact same reason. The grommets are on top of each other as opposed to next to each other, so when the bag is held, that can lead to a point. Again, the pointing doesn't bother me, but if it does bother you, it is something to just keep in mind that it is more likely to happen on the reissue bags or the 2.55 bags as opposed to the classic flaps. Storing it properly will really help uh, work on avoiding that problem in the long run. The final point I wanted to touch on is the price. As I said before, the medium 2.55 is currently retailing for over $10,000, while the mini currently retails for $4,900. That makes the mini under half the cost of the medium, and I think that is obviously very significant. As I showed you in the what fits portion, the mini fits almost as much, if not as much as the medium does, and I think it looks just as good on the shoulder or in the crook of the arm as the medium does. For those reasons, if I was going to pick a winner of this Battle of the Bags comparison, I would say that hands down it has to be the Mini 2.55. It's a great little bag that fits just enough, and for Chanel, I think it is still a reasonable price. If the Medium 2.55 is still your dream bag, that's also perfectly fine. I would recommend looking on the pre-love market if that's something that you're open to, but you know, if the bag is worth it to you, it's worth it even at a higher price point. Now, I'd love to hear your input in the comments down below. Are you team medium 2.55 or team mini 2.55? I do hope this video was helpful or at least interesting to watch. And if you liked it, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm. Subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.